hold this. Let me help you. Now spot it's on back. the board for some reason. If that's sine, then the inverse is sine with a little negative one up top. Okay? Same thing with tangent. The inverse of tangent is tan minus one. What do you think about cosine? Same thing. That's when you see that, that means the inverse of each of those. Okay? All right, let's try it. Time to write these down in your notes. Okay? Make sure we have these three formulas in your notes. Make it really easy. If the tangent of A equals X, then the inverse of X is the measure of A. attention right here. If the tangent of A is x, you get your answer, then the inverse of x is the measure of angle A. All we did was flip them right there. Tangent of A equals x, inverse of x equals the measure of angle A. So you ended up with AX inverse x A. Okay? Get this one down as well. If the sine of A is Y, then the inverse sine is the measure of angle A. Exactly the same thing. So what do you think about cosine? When you write this one down, go down and see if you can write the formula for cosine before I show it to you. As of right now, it looks like just a bunch of letters and formulas. As soon as we plug it into some triangles, it'll make a lot of sense to you. Okay, but you need to have these in your notes. Okay, everybody got sine down? Anybody write cosine down? Write it. I haven't put it up on the board yet. Look at, same there, same there. All we changed was tangent and sine. And then they used x and y. If you did cosine of x, it would be fine too. We should have, if the cosine of A equals X, we'll say, well, actually, let's call it Z because I know this, this is going to say Z. So if the cosine of A is equal to Z, then the inverse cosine of Z is equal to the measure of A. Let's see if we're right. Cosine of A is Z, then the inverse cosine of Z is the measure of that angle. Everybody got those in their notes? No. Not yet? I feel like we're good. All right. We're going to use a calculator to approximate the measure of A to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay, so go back to your sine, cosine, and tangent. We want this angle. We want this angle. We don't know this angle. What do we have? What information do we have? Do you have the hypotenuse? No, so you can't use sine or cosine, right? Have to use tangent. Right? Okay. So, we're going to go tangent of A is equal to what? Opposite over adjacent. 15 over 20. Okay. Punch uh, 15 divided by 20 into your calculator. You should know that off the top of your head. But we're going to use your calculator to find the uh, measure of the angle. What do we come up with? Okay, so 0.75. Leave it there on your calculator. That's the tangent of A. We need to find the measure of the angle. So we need to do what? inverse, what we just talked about. We need to get the inverse. Okay? So what you need to do is 
0.75. And on your calculator, push the second function, and then you'll see the you'll see the button for tangent with a minus one above it. It's the inverse tangent button. What do we come up with? 36.8 what? Okay, so let's round it to the nearest tenth. 36.9. So we just found out that this is 36.9 degrees. Okay? Let's figure out this angle just for fun. What, what function are we going to use? We don't have hypotenuse, so it has to be what? Good. So now we're still using tangent, but now we're doing tangent of C, and so the opposite is what? So now it's 20 over 15. Punch that into your calculator. 20 divided by 15. Now hit the second function and hit tangent, the inverse tangent again. 53.1. We just add up to 180 degrees, 53.1, 36.9, there's 90, there's another 90. We just figured out all the angles on the side of that triangle. Pretty simple. Figure out the tangent, and then use the inverse tangent to find the angle. Okay. How do we feel about it? Pretty simple. Good, let's go to the next one. Add these back in here. Okay, solve the right triangle. Round the decimal answers to the nearest tenth. Write that down in your uh, in your notes. A B C triangle. It's a right triangle. Who can tell me the answer to this angle the fastest? Close. You just did your math, but you you use the right idea. 48. Okay. 48 degrees. Why is this 48 degrees? Yeah, we know that's 90. We know that's 42. It has to add up to 180. Right? So we didn't need to use any functions there to figure out that angle. All right? So did you have to use inverse ratios to find that angle? No. You, you couldn't have anyway because you only have the one angle and one side. Here we go. That's called the triangle sum theorem, what we just did, right? Triangle sum theorem is the sum of the interior angles has to be 180. Okay, let's try and let's use the uh, tangent ratio and let's find BC. We know this angle, we know this length, let's just use tangent ratio to find the length of this. So are we going to need to use inverse? Do we need to use inverse ratio on this one? No, why? We already have the angle. We're looking for the side. Right? And we're looking for the side. We just use sine, cosine, tangent. And we're looking for the angles. We use the inverse. Pretty simple. Okay, figure it out. 42 degrees is your angle. So it's tangent 42 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Tangent of 42. Setting it up correctly, tangent 42 is equal to opposite, which is x over what? 70, that's our adjacent side. How would we go through and solve that one? Multiply, by 70. Multiply both sides by 70 and end up with 70 tangent, that would correct, cancel itself out. 70 times the tangent of 42. Okay. 63 point something? Does that make sense? If that's 70, could that be 63? Probably got the right answer then. All right, so go back and check it right now. Good. Let's switch it. Okay, now we're going to find AB. It tells you right there you need to use the cosine ratio. Go ahead and write that one down. Someone tell me how to set up the cosine ratio for that one. Cosine 42 equals 70 over x. Good. Cosine of 42 is equal to a 
adjacent over hypotenuse, 70 over x, right? And I just learned this earlier. Let's go a little make up. Okay, so cosine of 42 is equal to 70 over x. We can go through all the steps, uh, but what it comes out to is 70 divided by the cosine of 42, and that will give you x. Okay. What do we come up with on that one? 94 point something? 94.2, does that make sense? Hypotenuse is definitely going to be longer than your two legs. Good. Does that sometimes? Throws it up on me. Sorry. Will you hold this, please? Oh. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Real world, real world problem. Okay. Suppose your school is building a raked stage. The stage will be 30 feet long from front to back, with a total rise of two feet. A rake, angle of elevation of five degrees or less, is generally preferred for the safety and comfort of the actors. Is the rake stage you are building within the range suggested? Okay, so draw this triangle in your notes. It's got a total rise of two feet, so this end is just two feet. 30 feet is the rake, so that's the hypotenuse. Okay, we need to find this angle, angle X. Are we going to use regular trig functions or are we going to use inverse? inverse? Inverse, because we need to find the angle, okay? But what we need to figure out first is which function are we going to use? We have the, is this the opposite or adjacent side? Opposite, opposite and hypotenuse. Which one is it? Sine. Sine. Okay, so sine of x. Let's see if I can get this pen to work. Please hold, go back. Hold it longer on top. Okay, now touch ink. Touch an ink. There you go. Okay. On your paper, it should say sine of x equals 2 over 30. Correct? Okay. Let's do, in your calculator, 2 divided by 30. What do you get for 2 divided by 30? 0 0.06 something? Okay. We need to find that angle, so we're going to use the inverse of the sine. So do second and sine on your, comp on your uh, calculator. 3.8 something? Okay. So that angle right there you just figured out is 3.8 degrees. They want to know. For it to be safe, it needs to be 5 degrees or less. Is it 5 degrees or less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So you are able just now to figure out, based on the stage that they built, if that was a safe enough stage to use. Okay? Came out to 3.8. I think the next one is just the homework anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have to use inverse on that one? There we go. Did you have to use inverse on that one? Yeah. Yes, because you were lo looking for what? Good. If you're just looking for this side, would you need to use inverse ratios or no? No. Good. Good. There's your homework for tonight. Page 485, 139. Thank you. Write it down. Make sure we got it. There will be two or three questions on inverse ratios on your final. Understand it.
they're asking for the angle, make sure you know. You've got to use the inverse. Right, go ahead and get started on your homework.